So even if you know how to solve this basic algebra equation right here, it's possible you could be using a uh, ineffective method or a wrong approach to get to the solution. So what am I talking about? Well, of course, I'm going to explain this in the video. But first, let's see if you can solve this basic algebra one-step linear equation. All right, so the problem is 2 thirds t is equal to 1 fourth, and what we're trying to do here is solve for t. Now, this is a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 9, B is 12, C is 3 eighths, and D is 1 third. Okay, so this is the question, and feel free to use a calculator, but uh, really, you don't need one here if you know what you're doing. But if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this problem or these type of equations in a more effective manner. And I will highlight um, a, a technique or an approach that a lot of students take that is not a good way to solve these type of equations. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. And first things first, let's suppose you come across this problem on some sort of math quiz or an exam, and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I forgot all algebra, what should I do? Well, you should guess, and you're like, yes, indeed, that's what I was thinking, I'm gonna take a guess. So yes, you have one out of four chance here. Uh, the worst thing you could do when you're taking a math test, if you still have to take math tests, is to leave questions blank, just take guess. And you're like, hey, D looks pretty good. Well, that is wrong, but at least you uh, tried, right? So the only time you need to be careful in guessing on exams is if you're going to get penalized for uh, a wrong answer. And that could be the case on some uh, type of exams like the SAT or ACT. But never, ever, ever leave a question blank. But here is another method that you could use if you have some basic knowledge of algebra to figure out the right answer. And that is this. One of these over here is the correct solution. Now, we know that C is the right answer. So what we can do is plug in these values, these potential solutions, into the equation and see which one works. Now, T is the correct answer. Now, why is that? Well, let's suppose we're checking these answers, and now we check uh, 3 eighths. So what we're going to have is 2 thirds times, we're going to plug in 3 over 8 as our potential solution right here. And what we're going to uh, be doing is to see if this, uh, when we plug in uh, this 3 eighths for t, if this whole thing, when we do the math, is going to be equal to 1 fourth, because that's what an equation is. The left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and do that right now, assuming we understand how to multiply fractions. Here you can see we just cross-canceled the 3s, and we have 2 over 8, and that reduces down to the fraction 1 fourth. So indeed, 2 thirds times 3 eighths is equal to 1 fourth. So there you go. This is the correct solution. So never forget um, uh, this technique, especially with more advanced equations. Even if you don't know how to solve the equation, as long as you know how to check uh, for uh, check solutions in an equation, which is different than knowing how to solve the equation, you could still figure out the right answer. But uh, that only works if this is a multiple choice question. And if I take all this away, well, you're left with this lovely problem right here, which means we just simply need to do the math. Okay, so as I indicated, this is a one-step linear equation. That means uh, basically this t is to the first power. These are the most basic type of algebra equations. And let's go ahead and just think about some basic algebra equations that you may know how to solve. So what if I have x plus 9 is equal to 10, right? x plus 9 is equal to 10. Seems like a pretty simple problem. So what number plus 9 is equal to 10? Well, hopefully you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I even know that, and I haven't done algebra since 1956. Well, indeed, x is equal to 1. That is the solution, because 1 plus 9 is equal to 10. But technically, to solve this equation for x, what we want to do 
is subtract 9. Well, we, well, let me just kind of back up here. The objective is to get x on one side of the equation and the number on the other side. Now, this number, hopefully, is the solution if we do all this math right. So we want to get x on one side of the equation and a number on the other. But here we have x plus 9. I want x by itself, right? I got x plus 9. I want x by itself. So how can I get rid of this 9? So some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. Do 2 math man, just subtract a 9 away from that positive 9. And that is awesome. Indeed, we could do that, but we have a little uh, uh, kind of golden rule of algebra, and that is the following. So equations are very much like or exactly like a uh, balance scale, okay, or teeter-totter, seesaw, whatever the case you want to think. We have to keep this thing in balance. So if we subtract a 9 over here, as long as we subtract a 9 on the other side, we'll keep the equation in balance. So that is the golden rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, as long as you do the exact same thing to the other side, you'll be a-okay. All right, so we're going to subtract 9 over here because, I want, again, I want x by itself, so I have to subtract 9 on this side of the equation as well. All right, so now we're going to add down in a column manner. So x uh, plus nothing is x. Positive 9 minus 9 is 0. Okay, so this goes away. We don't need to write a 0. No, so now we just have x. Then 10 minus 9 is 1, and there you go. Okay, this is our solution. And, of course, we could always plug that in and check. But uh, why did I do this? Well, not to show off my basic uh, linear equation, one-step uh, equation um, ability. What I want you to do is notice something here. Okay, so here we have x plus 9. Okay, so we have an addition situation in this equation. And to solve this equation, we end up using subtraction. Okay, so let me kind of erase this real quick. So here was the um, situation and we have x plus 9 uh, is equal to 10. So to solve this equation, the operation is addition, we ended up using subtraction, okay? That's kind of what we call an inverse operation. Now, matter of fact, let's kind of switch this around. What about this equation right here? x minus 9 is equal to 10. Well, let's go ahead and solve this equation. So this is minus, time, minus 9. Excuse me, we want x by itself. So how can I get x by itself? Well, we can add 9. Okay, to both sides of the equation, and we're going to get x is equal to 19. So it appears that to solve an equation, at least a basic one-step equation, whatever the operation we have, we like to do the opposite on both sides of the equation. And that's pretty much the case, all right? This is called an inverse operation. And let's go ahead and apply that to our situation. So here we have 2 thirds t is equal to 1 fourth. Now, 2 thirds uh, t, this means multiplication. Okay, so this is two-thirds times t is equal to one-fourth. So before we take on this problem, okay, or actual problem in this video, let's do an easier version. Okay, so let's uh, do an easier version of multiplication situation. Something like this, two times t is equal to eight. All right, so two times t is equal to eight. Here's uh, two-thirds times t is equal to one-fourth. So multiplication, multiplication. So what do we do here? Well, uh, we have multiplication. So remember, in the previous examples, we were thinking the opposite operation. So here we have subtraction. Maybe we need to add. If we had addition, we subtract it from both sides. So what happens when we have multiplication? Well, you might be thinking the uh, reverse or the opposite of multiplication or its inverse operation, and that is division. Okay, the opposite of multiplication is division. So you're like, all right, well, maybe we need to divide both sides by something, maybe it's uh, divide by 2 to solve for t, and that's exactly what we want to do. Okay, so 2t is equal to 8, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. This is division, this little fraction bar here. So we have a multiplication situation, we're using division to solve, and we get t is equal to 4, which is the correct answer. Okay, so uh, everything seems to be a-okay, at least hopefully most here are saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I do uh, understand. Well, now let's apply that uh, kind of logic to our problem. So we have two-thirds t uh, is equal to uh, one-fourth. So we can think of this situation as multiplication because that is what it is. So if we're like, all right, if it's multiplication, then we need to use division to solve for t. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, divide, just like we had 2t here was equal to 8. We divided uh, both sides by 2. So here, 
we can divide both sides of the equation by 2 thirds to solve uh, for t. Now, we're going to have a bunch of fractions here, but let's do the math anyway. So 2 thirds t is equal to 1 fourth. We're going to divide both sides by 2 thirds. Nothing wrong here, okay? Everything is going to look pretty good because 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds, anything divided by itself is 1. We have 1 t or t. So we're going to have t is equal to, but now we have to figure out this mess right here. We call this a complex fraction. Anytime you have the numerator and denominator, uh, one of which being a fraction uh, or two fractions, um, in, the, in other words, if you have a fraction in the numerator, a fraction in the denominator, or a fraction numerator and no fraction in the denominator. Anyways, when you have a lot of fractions going on, this is called a complex fraction, but we have to just think about how to solve this. So this, again, two thirds divided by two thirds is one. That's pretty easy. But this is one fourth divided by two thirds. So we need to write it this way, one fourth divided by two thirds. And we want to go ahead and express it this way. So uh, T is going to be equal to one fourth divided by two thirds. Now we have to remember how to multiply or divide, excuse me, how to divide fractions. So we have to change uh, from division to multiplication by flipping this number on the right. So two thirds is going to go to three halves. Now we need to multiply these fractions, which is multiplying the respective numerators and denominators. So one times three is three. 4 times 2 is 8, and there is our solution. So t is equal to 3 eighths. Now, that is the correct answer, but unfortunately, uh, that is kind of doing it the long way, uh, the long way, excuse me. So most people are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's a lot of work to get, you know, this basic, um, you know, equation solved. And I would agree, okay, there is a better way. So if you solve the equation in this manner, and a lot of people do because they're thinking, oh, multiplication, I need to divide both sides. When you have a fraction coefficient, there is a much better way to solve these type of equations. Matter of fact, you need to understand uh, the way I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna give you a bonus tip as well. So there's like two ways, uh, one kind of primary technique that is much more efficient to solve these type of equations. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can, but the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Now, nothing really te technically wrong on the way we solved it uh, previously, okay? But I don't want you to think of, uh, of uh, this situation as multiplication. Indeed it is, we have 2 thirds times t is equal to x, but anytime you have a fraction, a fraction coefficient, okay? This number in front of the variable is called a coefficient. Anytime you have a fraction, it could be like 1 ninth x or 2 fifths y. Anytime you have this scenario, you want to think in this term. So you don't want to think, oh, multiplication, I need to, I need to do division. Nope, don't uh, think in those terms. What you want to do is think in these terms. Think in terms of, oh, I'm going to flip this fraction upside down and multiply both sides of the equation. Because remember, the uh, goal here is to get t by itself on one side of the equation. So there's a much better way to approach this. Matter of fact, let me show you to uh, right now. Okay, so here is our equation, right? Remember the goal is to get t by itself. So we have a two thirds t on the left side. How can we get just you know, a one t or t by itself? Easy, okay, so the procedure is just take this number, this fraction, flip it upside down. This works every single time. So two thirds times three halves. Now when you flip a fraction, that's called the reciprocal. So you're gonna multiply 
this fraction by the uh, the reciprocal. I mean, what, what you're going to get what? You're going to get uh, three times two is six over six. That is one. Or all this just cross cancels. You're gonna, you're going to get your one t. So all we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. Okay. So flip this upside down and multiply. So you're automatically going to get t on the left. And here we have uh, one times three is three. Four times two is eight. And you are done. And we don't have to hassle with complex fractions, okay? So this is the best uh, kind of way to think of these uh, fractions. And again, you know, as I indicated in the beginning of this uh, video, some, uh, you know, some of you can solve these, but you're doing it in a way that is really, you know, longer and, it, you know, you're also taking more steps, which increases the risk of you getting the wrong answer. Now, uh, let's take a look at another method that you can kind of think of, and this is perfectly fine. So here we have two-thirds t, so two-thirds t, like so. A lot of students are confused. They're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, is this the same thing as two t over three? And indeed it is, all right? Two-thirds t is equal to two t uh, over three. Okay, so if you see this, it also means this. It doesn't mean this, two over three t. Okay, it doesn't mean this. So the t can be like uh, two thirds times t over one. All right, so that t is in the numerator. So you can kind of think of um, uh, the scenario this way, two thirds t with the t like here in the center, or two t over three. Now, if you think of this as two t over 3, you have this. 2t over 3 is equal to 1 over 4. Now, what we have is two equal fractions. You have one fraction is equal to another fraction. This is what we call a proportion. And you can use something called the cross product. In other words, you can simply cross multiply uh, to clear these fractions. So we're going to get 4 times uh, 2t. So 4 times 2t is 8 t. Okay, 4 times 2t, again, 8t. 3 times 1, right here, we're cross multiplying is 3. And now we can just solve this basic uh, equation right here for t by dividing both sides of the equation by 8. So t is equal to 3 over 8. So that's another approach uh, to solve this problem. But even if you don't uh, use a proportion or think of this as a proportion, it's just good to know that these are equivalent. Okay, so a simple little lovely basic one step linear equation like this can get some people in trouble. Again, you don't want to make these problems any uh, longer than they have to because you're going to end up with these complex fractions. And uh, it's just the, you know, kind of a game of chance or a game of probability. The more steps you have to take in a math problem, the more uh, there is a chance for you uh, to get a wrong answer. Now, to avoid that, you need to be neat and structured and just write steps one at a time and double, triple check your work as you go. Uh, being a little bit paranoid is a good thing when it comes to mathematics. I make errors all the time and I'm like, you know, uh, I've been doing this for decades. Why? Because in a split fraction of a second, I can get, you know, I can lose my focus. Okay. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm thinking about a text message I got to answer or whatever the case is. We're only human. Okay. We're not total supercomputers here. So if you lose your focus, even for a microsecond, you can end up taking a wrong step. And if you don't catch it, you will make an error. Okay. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.